Hello and welcome to another episode of Talking Politics on the Hindus YouTube channel. I'm Nistula Hebbar, the political editor of the paper. And as always, I will be taking you through uh, some of the biggest headlines that made the news in domestic politics in the last week. The last week was Budget Week, uh, where we saw the interim budget being presented with a tremendous amount of confidence displayed by the government, by Prime Minister Narendra Modi and FM uh, Nirmala Sitaraman that uh, the Modi government will be voted back to power in July uh, to uh, present a complete budget. And we also saw uh, the big, big, big news that ran parallelly through it. And that was the legal and political travails of Jharkhand Chief Minister, now no longer Chief Minister, Hemant Soren. And uh, basically, this is the uh, uh, issue that we will be looking at in this week's Talking Politics. I have done an, uh, uh, an episode on Heyman Soren and other chief ministers who have been under the ED probe. But this is uh, when matters came to a head in the new state of Jharkhand. Welcome back and let's plunge right into uh, whatever was happening in Jharkhand. The date today is February 2nd, just to give you a sense of perspective of where I'm coming from and where uh, the, the, the cutoff date for the information that I have uh, to uh, put on, uh, on the day that I record the episode. And uh, basically, uh, we will be looking at what led to the arrest and resignation of Hemant Soren. Uh, who led the Jharkhand Mukti Morcha Congress government in Jharkhand uh, till Wednesday evening, which is when he quit that post and was arrested. For the last couple of years, Hemant Soren has been under the Elector Enforcement Directorate's probe in two uh, money laundering cases emanating from Jharkhand. Now, the first pertains to uh, the alleged illegal transfer of ownership of a parcel of land in Ranchi, while the other is linked to uh, rampant illegal stone mining in Sahib Gaj district in the state. Now, Soren's questioning uh, uh, basically on Wednesday, which it followed 10 summons issued to him before they pertain to the case over the parcel of land in Ranchi. So the arrest and the questioning uh, at that point uh, was on one of the two uh, cases that I mentioned earlier and is based on a first information report that is an FIR filed under IPC sections 420, which is cheating, 467, forgery of valuable security and 471, uh, which is using uh, forged documents as genuine. Uh, in June 2022, on the complaint of a tax collector employed with the Ranchi Municipal Corporation. Now, uh, the complaint uh, accused uh, one Pradeep Bakchi of allegedly forging documents to claim ownership of 4.55 acres of land at uh, Muradabadi Musa in Ranchi, where, which he then sold to Kolkata-based Jagat Bandhu Tea Estate Private Limited. Now, based on this complaint, the EG, ED registered uh, an enforcement complaint information report, which is an ECIR or an FIR equivalent in this case on the 21st of October 2022. Now, the ED contends that proceeds of crime generated through the fraudulent sale of this parcel of land was used to acquire 7.16 acres of land in Ranchi's Bajra area. The agency in its prosecution complaint said it found that the parcel of land in question was valued at rupees 7 crore in the sale deed between Jagat Bandhu Tea Estate Private Limited and uh, Bakchi and nearly one third of its uh, market value, which they estimated as 20.75 crores. It also alleged that the land was priced at rupees 7 crore in the sale deed, but only 25 lakhs exchanged hands. Further, the ED accused now suspended IAS officer Chavi Ranjan, who was the deputy commissioner of Ranchi at that time, that is 15 July 2020 to 11 July 2022, when the alleged transfer of ownership took place of aiding the forgery trans, uh, uh, of aiding the forgery of documents uh, to show that uh, Pradeep Bakchi's father, Prafulla Bakchi, was the owner of the property. This, the ED said, was done through the officer, uh, Office of the Registrar of Assurances in Kolkata and the Local Service uh, uh, Circle Office in Ranchi. Now, the prosecution's complaint says that the acquisition of the parcel of land in Ranchi on lease by the government 
for defense purposes predates independence and uh, therefore this is a very very fraudulent kind of transfer of land that has happened and needs to be looked into. Uh, Heyman Soren has consistently denied being in any way involved uh, in the transaction. So that is that. Now let's go on to what led to Wednesday night's arrest. Now the resignation of Chief Minister and his subsequent arrest came after some high voltage drama as earlier the ED was supposed to question uh, Heyman Soren in Delhi. But fearing his imminent arrest, because he knew that this time around he's going to be arrested, he decided to take a 1200 kilometer road trip to Rachi. He needed to put his house in order. As I said in the last episode, there were a lot of talk. Then one uh, MLA resigned that his wife, Katna Soren, would be made to fight a bipole and would be appointed chief minister in case Hemant Soren gets arrested. Uh, the same that happened. With, uh, with, in, in Bihar with Lalu Prasad Yadav and Chief Minister Rabri Devi. But uh, that didn't happen. Uh, after the 1,200-kilometer uh, road trip, uh, Mr. Soren reached uh, Rachi. And at around 1 p.m. on Wednesday, the ED reached the residence of Heman Soren in Rachi for questioning in the Landscamp case. Ahead of the questioning of the federal agency, he chaired, Heman Soren that is, chaired the meeting of the MLAs of the ruling coalition and uh, of course, all of this intensified speculations that he's going to be arrested immediately. Now, after seven hours of uh, questioning, two minibuses of JMM Congress MLAs reached Raj Bhavan. This was followed by Heman Soren with the team of the Enforcement Directorate. The JMM leader tendered his resignation to Jharkhand Governor C.P. Radhakrishnan and uh, the JMM Congress Legislature Party declared Champai Soren, a minister in that government, in Heman Soren's government, and considered a Soren family loyalist as the next chief minister. So no Kalpana Soren, it's family loyalist, a loyalist, old party ma man, Champai Soren, who was declared as the next uh, chief minister because he was elected uh, by the MLAs of the JMM Congress uh, coalition. On Thursday evening, um, just as the JMM Congress MLAs were being herded into buses en route to Congress rule Telangana for safekeeping, Governor Radha, uh, Radhakrishnan invited Champai Soren to form a new government. And on Friday, he, he has taken oath as the next chief minister. Now, Governor Radhakrishnan also took his time to take this decision, which is why uh, fearing poaching from the BJP, the um, JMM Congress MLAs were uh, first put in the circuit house, then they were put into buses. There was all talk of them going to Hyderabad, which has a Congress ruled government, and to stay put there till the governor takes a call on um, you know, calling uh, Mr. Champai Soren to take um, um, oath, and then, of course, proving his majority on the floor of the Jharkhand Assembly. Heman Soren, for his part, was remanded to one day in term custody. And he moved the Supreme Court on Friday morning, challenging his arrest. Uh, but he was told to approach the High Court and was not accorded any relief by the Apex Court. So that is where we are. Now, in a video message recorded just before his arrest, Heyman Soren said that he would not cow down to pressure of this kind and that the time had come to wage war against a feudal system that oppresses the poor, Dalits and tribals. Uh, quite clearly, this is not just a legal battle, but very much a political one as Jharkhand faces both Lok Sabha and Assembly polls this year. Uh, uh, Heman Soren is not the first chief minister of Jharkhand to be arrested. Of the six chief ministers of the state so far, Champai uh, Soren would be the seventh. Heman Soren is the third after Madhu Koda and his own father, Shibu Soren, to be arrested. Now, the arrest also forces a spotlight on other political leaders facing ED probes, including Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal, who on Friday morning again received a summons uh, from uh, the ED for questioning. These again were multiple summons which have not been complied with by Mr. Kejriwal. This is in the liquor license case, the sorry, excise policy case, under which two uh, other ministers of his government have already uh, been to, uh, are already in jail. Uh, this is a probe that he hasn't joined uh, so far. Now, the opposition leaders, what is the politics around all of this? One would say that, you know, ED is doing a probe, there has been corruption, there have been complaints, and therefore, 
uh, one is trying to kind of pursue the case and if there's a chief minister who comes in the way, the law is the same for everybody. But opposition leaders have been vocal that they consider the government's use of enforcement agencies against political rivals as purely a tool for legal harassment in situations where the government feels it cannot get the better of the opposition. While the ruling party says that corruption cases follow their own logic, and must be subject to the law. They said these are ongoing investigations. There is really uh, no interference from the government when it comes to ongoing cases. Now, the arrest of Heman Soren is, of course, a big move in a situation where he represents a party that channeled tribal aspirations for a separate state of Jharkhand and uh, with the BJP too, uh, pushing ahead with the tribal outreach. There is one other angle of looking at the arrest of Heyman Soren. Now, whose actions will persuade the public at the hustings? Will Heyman Soren get the sympathy of the public that he that he feels he should get in the video message that he talked about, that he was being harassed because he, he was one of the few people who, who managed to win elections in, in a situation where the BJP is a dominant political force in the country? Or is the BJP going to carry the day saying that no, Wherever, uh, uh, you know, there has been corruption, it has been found out and that Mr. Heyman Soren is just trying to signal virtue when none exists. Now, and that actually is where the real battle will conclude. Not only the Lok Sabha elections of 2024, but more than that, the assembly elections to be held later that year. That is later in this year of 2024. Now, uh, as uh, Jharkhand settles down to a new political reality and a new chief minister. We will end this episode on this note. This is all I have for you this week. I will see you next week. Thank you so much for watching.